What is going on, guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Immersive Engineering. And today, guys, we're going to be setting up both the Steam Turbine and the Alternator, which technically are going to be combining into one extremely large, extremely expensive multi-block structure that's going to allow us to finish off the Steam Power Generation setup that we've been working on for about two or three episodes now. So if you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, I would recommend you go watch those just because you're going to need to know how to do all that stuff if you want to get to this step and actually set this up and make it useful useful. But a general overview is we start by pumping out some water, then we turn it into distilled water, then we turn that distilled water into steam. And that's where we are now. So we got to turn that steam into energy. And to do that, like I said, we are going to be setting up two things that are going to combine into one, which is the steam turbine, which is going to allow us to take that steam and turn it into kinetic energy. And then that kinetic energy needs to be turned into electrical energy through the use of the alternator. So you're basically gonna squish these two things together since they are considered separate, but they're gonna interact as one and it's gonna end up being an extremely expensive 14 block long multi-block structure that looks pretty darn cool and is gonna generate us some nice power. Now, something that I like to compare it to is going to be one of the first things you touch in immersive engineering, which is the water wheel. Now, it's basically the same as this, considering the water wheel generates kinetic energy. It's spinning, it's generating rotational kinetic energy, much like the turbine will be doing. Instead of using steam, though, for this, it's using water. So relatively similar. Um, and then the alternator, in this case, it's going to be compared to, I believe this is the kinetic dynamo here. I don't actually know what this is called, but whatever. It's going to convert the kinetic energy into electrical energy. So you're always going to need that to convert between the kinetic to electrical. And that's basically what we're doing on a much larger scale today. And like I said, a much more expensive one. So this is definitely not something to do early game. It's going to net us a boatload of power. But if we look in here, you can see that it's going to require a fair bit of steel. So yeah, it's definitely one of those things much like um, the excavator that costs a lot, but unlike the excavator, uh, it is not one of a kind. There are other ways to generate a bunch of power. So I would say, I don't think this one is the most efficient, but I definitely think it's one of the most fun and interesting to set up. And let's be honest here. It looks pretty freaking awesome. So if you want something cool in your world, that is decently accurate in terms of the science behind it, then setting this thing up is definitely a good way to go. So we're gonna pull all this stuff out. We got a lot of things in here. We've never really touched high voltage coil blocks before, some generator and radiator blocks. You actually need five high voltage capacitors, 28 heavy engineering blocks, uh, 35 steel sheet metal, and 12 blocks of steel. That is all required for setting up these two uh, multi-block structures. Now the stuff right here is just kind of assorted things that we can use for pulling power, transporting fluid. So you don't actually need all of this, but I'm just having it here in case. And then we're good to go. So one thing I want to say before I actually do this is I, you know, I wanted to show this to you guys for a while now and I got everything ready and I recorded a 20 minute video on it. Uh, and you know, it's like past 10 o'clock at night right now and I got to be up for work in the morning and I had work today. Uh, I record it and then I hit the button to stop recording and it says video has started recording. So it stopped in the middle of my recording. And so I came back and I was like, nope, that's not good enough. I wanted to record this tonight. It's been forever since I made a video. And uh, I just replied to someone on Twitter about it, actually, that life's been pretty hectic recently, uh, taking care of stuff. But I wanted to get a video out tonight because I had the time. So I went back with my pick and I tore down the entire setup. And this is a lot of blocks, as you'll see. I tore the whole thing down and we're starting from scratch again. So I've actually just set this up uh, over here maybe 15 minutes ago. Um, so you guys are seeing the refined version. You guys are seeing the version two. So hopefully this one will be even better uh, and even quicker. But I made this little area over here just because I did not have a flat plot of land that is 14 blocks long. I believe that the setup is going to be uh, three blocks by 14 blocks by, I don't know how tall it is, but the length and the width is gonna be three by 14. So decently large. So we're gonna set it up over here. And luckily for us, we can just use the projector to make it easy. So we have the steam turbine. And actually if we go to the alternator, for some reason it's the end of the alternator one, but you can see, um, and it's very, very small. So you're gonna to wanna to full screen this. Uh, and unfortunately I can't make it any bigger, but this is how it's going to look in the end. You're gonna have the steam turbine on the left here, and you're gonna have the alternator, which is gonna be flipped 180 degrees. And that's what's on the right there. And so you've got the power output on the right, you got six different ones, and then you have the fluid input on the back of the left. So pretty simple to work with. But uh, yeah, so now we go to the steam turbine. 
pretty much briefly reading through this, it's the same thing I said, which is it's a multi-block structure. You input steam, you get kinetic energy from it, from the turbine inside of it. And then we have here, the kinetic energy output is in the rear of the machine, the steel block, and it produces 8,192 Newton meters of torque at the max speed of 6,144 radians per second. Now, if you've never taken, I want to say either upper high school classes, you might start learning about this determined like, determine by what school you're in. You know, certain school systems go over it, some don't. Um, I mainly went over this stuff when I got into college um, in like basic sort of physics courses and whatnot. Um, but this is the sort of stuff you're going to be learning about in the, the units you'll be using when you start talking about rotational kinetic energy and things like that. So, you know, things like radians per second, I think you learn, but I don't know if you start working with torque or anything uh, until then. But we actually worked a lot with this if you saw the Rotary Craft series. So you're going to be producing that much kinetic energy. And then you need to, like it says, put it in the alternator to get that into the electrical energy. And there will be further calculations there based off the speed and the torque. Um, so really all you need to know is chances are with this setup during the day, you'll be running it at max speed the entire time. Does So you don't need to do any complicated math or anything. But if you want to learn a little bit about it, uh, it makes sense scientifically. So you can actually look through it. It's definitely interesting. And it is definitely a throwback to rotary craft, which was a long, long time ago. So we can start setting this up. I think the projector is set to the alternator right now from when I was setting stuff up before, but here's the steam turbine. We'll pull this out. And uh, so we wanna make sure it's oriented right. It is in fact, and we can see that because if we kind of inch our way over, the redstone engineering block is what we wanna be on the end there. That means the fluid input is gonna be on the back left of the machine. Uh, from our screen. So we're going to come over one more and place it down right here. So pretty much perfect. Uh, that means the fluid input's going to be like right here. And then we will have plenty of blocks right here to hook up just enough actually, because it does extend to this block for the steam turbine. This will be where the alternator gets put. So we can start throwing this bad boy together. So we're just going to speed through this, throwing down all these heavy engineering blocks. Uh, and I do need to start throwing some of these that we are going to be using into my actual hot bar. So we'll get rid of those really quick. And then we just have a lot of sheet metal in these middle areas here to fill them out. So we'll be doing that again, more sheet metal. Uh, we need some heavy engineering blocks there and there. And I believe we have some blocks of steel running through the middle as this is going to be uh, the main part that is being rotated. So, that is where pretty much all of your steel is going to go. Then we have, do we have any more? Yes, we got some more heavy engineering blocks and now we can pull out the fluid pipes and we can replace the capacitors because we don't need those with the redstone engineering block. And we can get our fluid pipes going over there. And what are we missing over here? Sheet metal. Then we got some more sheet metal up here and we got some more right over here. So it's a lot of the only annoying thing about this to me is that it, the blocks kind of jump around a lot. Uh, it's not just stacking the same block on top of itself repeatedly, like some of these machines are. So we're nearing the top though. So now we got all these radiator blocks and I believe that should be it. So we'll grab out our hammer and we will assemble it by clicking on the central steel block over here. So there we go. And we should be able to jump up if I can time it right over here, there we go. And there we go. So you can see it extends right here. We can get the projector to get that out of here and looks pretty awesome. So then we're going to back up the alternator, which is going to have to be rotated from what it's going to initially show as right over here. So we go to the alternator again, says the same exact thing that I was saying, which is you are going to back it up to the steam turbine to get your kinetic energy. And then it's going to turn it into uh, the electrical energy. And so, um, it's going to be input at the back of the machine where the sheet metal blocks are and the machine produces speed times torque divided by 800 flux per tick can store 1.2 million flux and can output the high voltage power at 4,096 flux per tick, which is the exact amount we can transport it at. If we're only pulling with one thing, it can do that per energy device connected and you can have up to six. So you can output a lot faster if you'd like. I don't really see a huge point, um, but if you're powering a ton of stuff, totally okay. So we're gonna pull out and set up the projector for this. And then, like I said, we're going to have to rotate it 
because we want it to be like this. So we're going to want to have these uh, generator blocks on this side towards the steam turbine. And then we got to pull out our high voltage capacitors and then start putting down some of these high voltage coil blocks like that. So we can finish off the capacitors, finish off the heavy engineering blocks and whatnot. Finish off the steel that connects it. There we go. And we got the high voltage coils, another set of high voltage coils and last three and there we go. So then we're going to click on it on the back side here to assemble it and get rid of the projector. And there we go. So it's all hooked up nice and quick, not really any complicated stuff to set up. And thankfully the input is relatively easy to work with. So like I said, the output for the high voltage is right over here. You've got three outputs on this side, three on the other side, you're going to get 4,096 from each. It does actually have decent internal storage. I mean, it's, it's mediocre. I would say for expending five, high voltage capacitors, it's pretty subpar, um, but uh, it's not bad. It's better than some of the other machines. So, um, but it's gonna get to that really quick if it's actually running. So really what we gotta do now is take these fluid pipes and come over from here. I actually don't think, can we run it directly by this? Does there, is there anything this connects to here? Nope, cool. So we can run it right by this, keep it nice and clean, bring it around over here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we can just click it like that. And you know what? We'll bring it down here. So it's actually going to start running. You can hear it makes a little bit of a noise. Then the middle block where all that steel was starts spinning. And eventually it's going to stop. And it's not because we ran out of steam. It's because it hit its internal power limit. So the steam is going to keep flowing out um, as it fills up the uh, fluid pipes and internal buffer for that. But eventually we will start collecting more steam. I think once it hits around 5,000 is when it should sort of rebound. Okay, so it rebounds when it hits about 8,000, 9,000. But so now the internal power is completely full. So I'm going to worry about pulling power out of this off camera just because we got to get it all the way over there. And I really, I keep saying this. I want to try and make the power sort of wiring setup look a little bit better. I know it's kind of a pipe dream considering I'm super lazy about it and I don't really know if there's a good way to make it look better in all honesty with how far we are along with all this, but I'll do that off camera. Uh, and you can see there's some annoying things where this sort of texture goes away when, you know, it's a little bit off camera, the central block. So a little bit annoying, but it definitely looks cool. It's an awesome, massive multi-block structure that all functions together and it generates you a fair bit of power. So I don't think it's the worst thing in the world to set up. It's definitely a cool thing to set up, but I would not say it's the most efficient thing in the entire world. So do so at your own risk. If you got a ton of steel to throw around, then absolutely I'd recommend it. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know it's been a bit since the last one, um, but like I said, life has gotten hectic, you know, working an eight to five job. And I said this to a person on Twitter, but working a job from eight to five where I have anywhere from like a, like basically like a 50 minute commute to work and then 50 minute commute home, trying to go to the gym five days a week for like an hour. And, uh, also having a fiance and three cats means that YouTube occasionally falls by the wayside. Usually my weekends are my recording times, or once I finish working from home on Fridays, um, and unfortunately I've been very busy with some stuff. So my recording time has gotten a little bit messed up. We've been getting a lot of furniture to our house and things like that. Um, that has happened over the weekends and that tends to interrupt it. So, um, unfortunately I think we should be back on track, but it did take a little bit of a hit for a while. So I appreciate you guys bearing with me. And I know you were asking for some more episodes, which is why, even though this is the second time recording this, um, I'm going through it so that you guys have something to watch, you know, in case you are being, uh, you know, quarantine for the coronavirus, which I did want to touch on because I did want to say that, um, you know, I live in the U S in a state where it is not bad yet. But for those of you, I know I have a very widespread audience. So for those of you that, um, you know, might be not as young as me or, uh, you know, even younger, um, definitely be safe. And if you are stuck at home or quarantined, you know, especially if you live in like Italy, which is under full lockdown now, um, definitely just, you know, be safe, be healthy, uh, wash those hands. And uh, yeah, I'm wishing you guys all the best. And hopefully this will help entertain you for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes of your day if you are stuck inside. So, um, but yeah, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you have a nice week.
and I will talk to you later. Standing in a glass bowl at the end of a black hole, coal lost and upside down. Faces rolling past me, all my memories rolling vastly.